How's that for a turn up for the books? I'm actually doing this two days in a row. Hey, lucky you, internet. And also lucky you, because I'm not going to talk about my boring old life for once. Because, you know, nothing happens. <laughs> ah, God, I've done the pepper. But yeah, seeing as actually nothing really happens in my life, well, from a day-to-day -day basis at least, I'm going to talk about two different areas that have piqued my interest of late. The first of which is from a television show. Uh, people who live in England have no doubt heard of Benefit Street. For those of you who haven't, it's uh, a documentary made by Channel 4 in which uh, they basically bait people on television and the public and journalists with this show about people who are on benefits in the welfare system. It's, well... It's a show that I was forced to watch to start with, but it's one of those shows that you get so enraged about that you can't not watch it. It's horrible. I feel dirty. I need I need a shower after watching it, to be honest. But anyway, this is a show, lack of a better word, is set on a street in Birmingham where apparently 90% of the people are on benefits. There's actually like 80% of the people are like old age pensioners who aren't working. And there's about probably about a quarter of the houses that are actually in the working population, and probably about ninety percent of them are on benefits, <laughs> which is very very misleading. But that's the kind of stats that newspapers and journalists and politicians love because it's all complete bullshit, and it's great. And after this particular episode, which was thankfully the last, there was a live debate afterwards on the benefit system. And I'm happy to say it was very, very well informed. Except not. Uh, it, was, it was crap. It was one of the worst debates about anything I think I've ever heard. It was uh, involved uh, Richard Bacon as host, who is probably the world's worst live debate host on any matter ever, because he was appalling. He was probably the worst thing in the entirety of the thing. Uh, one side was very irritating journalists who were very either patronising about people on welfare or very angry about people on welfare or blaming the government or blah, blah, blah. There was two reasonably on-the-ball politicians, one Labour, one Tory. Very funny that there was no Lib Dems, <laughs> but oh well. Uh, and it also had the cast of the show, who are real people, apparently. And pff, it was... It, it, was, it was just crap. <laughs> Nothing really got discussed. It was just people yelling at each other, especially this one woman at the back who was just yelling constantly. It was like, oh yeah, we should blame the government because they force us to sit on our ass and do nothing all day. Uh... Anyway, I won't ramble because uh, I can't really talk because I was on benefits for quite a while, in fact. But I got off benefits because I got a job, thankfully. And about a year and a half later, I've now got enough money. I've got my own place. I've moved halfway across the country. And I'm doing pretty well for myself. It's not a great job. It pays the bills, it pays my rent. I've got enough money over to do things. That's all you need in life. You don't need to be a millionaire. What is the point? I'd love it. Yeah, true. Definitely. Who wouldn't want... Who'd turn down the opportunity to be a millionaire? But you've got to be realistic. Let's face it. No one's... All these rags to riches stories they're all either bollocks or filled with massive massive ethical issues <laughs> that you really shouldn't involve yourself with but yeah because uh, me just proving the fact that you can do this you get yourself off benefits you get a job you do well for yourself and just perhaps it shows that the state of the economy and the job market isn't really as bad as people will want to believe and I think the main pro one of the main problems is people who think <sighs> one of the main problems is people think that if they get themselves off benefits and they get a job they'll suddenly become rich and all their dreams will come true and they'll be able to do everything they've ever wanted and that's not going to happen and the jobs that they get offered because people who have been out of work for years who have no qualifications they're obviously not going to get higher ranking board jobs or something like this but that pay millions a year and all this so they just think why should I bother this job's shit and I'll get less money so why should I come off the benefits like, well yeah true but you're a drain you're a drain on the economy 
on the world and you just need to get a job. Fine, if you're actually properly, properly incapacitated or you have about a thousand kids and you can't visit and you can't go to work. But don't claim fucking benefits for all these kids because that is the other thing that really winds me up. <laughs> that you see this in the papers all the time. So like, oh yeah, I've got thirty-five kids and the government want to cut my benefits. It's like, yeah, you're still on fucking four hundred grand a year, though, aren't you, from these benefits? It's like, oh fuck, yo. But yeah, like I said, I, I won't ramble because yeah, I used to be. I'm not anymore. And to be honest, I don't care enough because I'm not a politician and I'm not a journalist. And I'm not on benefits, so I don't really care. Second topic was uh, something that was raised in a video I watched recently, actually, from uh, Jim Sterling on The Escapist in Jimquisition. I think I'm saying that right. About uh, free to wait gaming. And yeah, it's very annoying. I've put the video, well, the video isn't annoying, the video's quite good. It's on, you can find it on The Escapist, so I post it on my Tumblr. They're both, it's worth a watch, I think. Because he gets very infuriated and it's quite funny. But uh, I think it's basically free to wait boils down to mainly casual gaming. It started really with Farmville, where you get land and you make you make certain types of money and premium types of money. And the premium money allows you to do things quickly and it allows you to get special things. So that basically means the normal money is complete bullshit. And the only real way to get premium money is to pay for it. And obviously, with games like Farmville and The Simpsons Tapped Out and Candy Crush, you can pay loads and loads of real life money into these games, like I have, because I'm really quite pathetic when it comes to this sort of thing. I've spent so, so much money on games like Tapped Out and Candy Crush, and especially FIFA 13. If you notice, Quite a lot of these games are made by EA. But I'm not going to go on a ramble about them. Not yet, anyway. And the amount of money I've spent on these games, I seriously would not want to add up in my head, or on a bit of paper, or have proof of any sort of type that I've spent that much money. Because I think I'd rather just throw myself off the balcony. Because it's just not worth thinking about. I don't do it anymore. At all. I've, I, I, I say at all. I would still do it with FIFA 14 occasionally, but I, w I don't spend any money on any casual games anymore, because it's not worth it. You don't get anything out of it at all. And yeah, the phrase that Jim coined for this was free to wait, because obviously the premium money tends to speed things up. So you're being forced to wait 24 hours or so for no reason, unless you pay them. <laughs> it's basically like a loan shark, really. So you can you can struggle on, or you can give us some money, and then maybe you can go a bit, and then you can get a bit better at it, and then you can have to then buy some more money because you're now addicted. Let's face it, it's it's for compulsive morons, of which I count myself, and I'm not proud. But talking of EA, I have you, you always hear crap about EA constantly, especially from me. Let's face it, I will buy it. I hate EA. But, thinking purely from a business point of view, have they got that the greatest company ideal of all time? Because all they do is release the same shit every year. It's <laughs> make the most money for the least effort. Is that not what you know businesses strive to do? Because that is all they care about, money. At the end of the day, all they care about is money. Let's face it. And... But this is slightly doomed, this model, I fear. Well, I don't fear, I fucking hope it is. But it is doomed, because you make the most money for the least effort, fine. But eventually, people get pissed off of you and stop buying your shit. There'll always be some fucking morons who will always buy FIFA and will always buy Call of Duty, or whatever one they make. Stupid modern warfare wank. And games especially like Need for Speed and stuff like that, where they just release... <laughs> they just release essentially the same game with new cars and the same maps, and it's just crap. <sighs> yeah, you really do bum me out, especially about gaming in general. Uh, oh, last little thing. Talking of gaming, uh, my hopes for the new console generation are not exactly elevated at the minute. I know they've been out a few months now, very little has happened apart from issues being raised. Apparently the PS4 is winning. 
But I don't really care. I mean, who cares about the winner as a consumer? Not me. But I'll probably, to be fair, still get an Xbox One. Because I've got an Xbox down there. I've got, well, to be fair, I've got my Xbox down there, but obviously you can't play your Xbox games. On, so it doesn't really matter which one I get, I suppose. But I do like Microsoft more than I like Sony. Uh, so yeah, then uh, my my hopes aren't high, basically, and I think that more of the free to wait type business models will be put on proper AAA gaming. It's just like you you've seen it with like especially Mass Effect Three, for instance. They just put they push out an unfinished game, and then they just release DLC for it afterwards, and it's shit. Absolute shit. The first time I got really enraged at this was at Fable Three, when uh, it found when you found out that the I can't remember what it's called, uh, it was like the Keep DLC afterwards, which was quite good, was actually ready before the release of the game. So therefore, you buy the game and then you buy this ever little bit, but they could have just you know put in the game. But no, Peter Molyneux and Lionhead, you dicks. But Peter's now left Lionhead. I do quite like Peter Molyneux generally, because he's just fun, because he's bonkers. But yeah, that's my rambling over really today. And aren't you lucky, I wasn't talking about myself all that much. So yeah, I suppose I'll sign off. Bye internet.